Hola, folks. For I am the only one, the only, the uno, uno más. Ah, sí. Hijo del hobo, el vagabundo. Dos. Sí. And I'm here to talk about some wrestling. Um, I received an most untimely letter from one hobo Tom. He said he was too busy over this whole Thanksgiving. What is this Thanksgiving? Is this turkey? Is this like a Chris? Is this a Christmas burrito? Is this a Thanksgiving taco? I don't know. What I do know, I do know some pro wrestling. Um, I again, I did receive a letter. Oddly, a fairly sternly wordly letter from Hobo from Senior Hobo Tom. He said. Sir, let me read letter. You filth. Oh, I don't think I could read some of these words. But that's okay. I'm going to talk about some wrestling anyway. Mainly to make up for what, obviously, Hobo Tom forgot to do. Which is not good. So, Sir, let's start with some AEW. Um, Senior Hobo Tom had to go see La Señorita. So... Uh, let's get into this. Um, AEW starts off with Hangman Adam Page shaking on John Silver. Oh, John Silver tried to make peace with him. No fist bump. No, no, no. It's not being, being, being. There was no fist bump. Um, from there, Page again. He caught Silver. That's great. Uh, Page again, much stronger. Muy guapo individual. E, not as handsome as, of course, El, or Hijo del Hobo, El Vagabundo. Tres, me. Sometimes. Um, from there, there's a big backdrop. Sean Silver's so good at selling. Um, and Silver's also really good, which very few wrestlers are. He's really good at talking through all of his matches. That's fun. Always trash talking. That's always very good. Um, they start to trade off chops. Um, then then once some forearms and punches. That's good stuff. Yay! Boo! See? Si. No. See? Si. Or bien? Page did an over the top rope splash. Always amazing to see that. Uh, from there, it was a small drop, a standing moonsault. He's so athletic, and he's a relatively he's a relatively big muscular guy. You don't see a lot of muscular guys do that kind of stuff. Good stuff. Silver. He had his little flurry of offense that was really good, and his kicks. He knows what he's doing in the ring. He could. He's becoming that good comedic wrestler. He has the timing and the chops for it. It's very good to see. However, it wasn't good enough because Paige eventually hit the buckshot lariat. <laughs> Silver. I don't know how they sell like that. That's amazing when he goes like flippy inside out. That's great. A really good cheeseburger match. Or you know what? No, no, no. We're going to use my scale. This was a burrito of a match. Then they ask the dark order. Then the dark order comes out. They say, "Hey, Kenny Omega left you. We want you to join us instead." Yeah, there's no message there. Uh, Kenny Omega does a quick interview. Uh, Will Hobbs comes out, new member of Team Taz. Uh, I forget the guy's name. I'm sorry. All I know is that he was El Jabber McJabber doing El Jabo. Doing El Trabajo. See. Si. And he's like. Uh, Will Hobbs just tossed him around. Squash match. What it should be. Eh. It's a taco of a match. From there. It has us his promo. It was really good. Cody shows up. Again. Eventually Cody's going to get that FTW belt. Uh, we have Kingston and Moxley backstage. 
And then we have a little thing uh, for Hybrid 2. Again, Jack Evans is so good. And, oh yeah, I'll talk about this match in a little more detail. Uh, so we have Top Flight. Again, the only thing they're missing, they have to be flown in. They need to, need to be flown in by Airwolf and have the Airwolf theme. Uno, they have to be in El Helicopter the Airwolf. And, and those, they need a Musica del Airwolf. Um, but this is great. And Helico. And Helico is so good. Oh. In Lucha Underground, he was allowed to do so much. Now, again, he's a much more grounded, very technical wrestler. Again, through Luchador. Actually, a very thin, tall Luchador. Very wiry, too. Um, top Flight, the guy does some deep arm drags. Really good to see. And Helico does the Mexican arm drag. Oh, is that Legato? Legata. <laughs> he's sniffing around me. So what I am doing here, instead of her hobo tom, and <laughs> she just flops somewhere. That's okay. Where are you? Flop, whap, tail whap, who? A tail whap brings brings many a men to their knees. Um, and and Helico again. He's a smart wrestler. Evans, oh, so good. He gets in. Again, big, big kicks from Evans. Evans is so fun to listen to in the ring. He doesn't need a mic. You could hear him. He, it's one of those skills certain wrestlers either have or they don't have where they can actually project their voice without a mic to actually get to the, the hobo seats. He can do it. Uh, hybrid 2, again, they capitalize off the... Well, Hybrid 2 have, the, of course, the classic heel miscue. Uh, top flight, then they do the dives over ropes. Wow, the one guy has so much air. Um, to finish the match though, and Helico gets like a knee bar ankle lock. That was really good to see. Oh, I'm so happy. The hybrid two, I got to see them finally win a match. They deserve a lot better than what they've been getting. This is a burrito of a match. Then we get, um, so Darby Allen was in this. He likes to set things on fire. You better be careful. If you play with fire, eventually you will be burnt. And then there was Vicky and Nyla Rose. I almost said Nyla Jax. Nyla Rose promo, um, revival, and. Tully Blanchard, do a little recap. Then we have SCU, because this, because Daytona Beach is the worst town ever. Yeah. I don't, that's not, that's not a wrestling trope. Daytona Beach is the worst town ever. But SCU comes in, they take on Jake Hager and Chris Jericho. Very classic start. Uh, again, a tie up to the headlock. Chris Jericho. He's a little pot bellied there. <laughs> that's that's kind of cool to see. Again, he's smart. He knows how to wrestle. He's really good. Uh, the inner circle. Again, they're surrounding the outside. Let's see here. Yep, they they definitely have great heel work. Chris Jericho is so good, especially when uh, who was it? It was Christopher Talley just sent to the corner. The Inner circle kind of interfere a little bit. They distract the referee. Hagar kind of goes after uh, Kazarian on the ring. The ref ref has no idea which way is forward. Chris Jericho just works over. Poor Christopher Christopher Daniels in the corner. Uh, Hagar hit a big slam and cross faces. His cross faces look very believable, and I'll get into some non believable cross faces later. Kaz eventually does make the hot tag with a comeback. Uh, it goes all out, cleans the house. Uh, inner, uh, he winds up on the outside. The inner circle go after him. Christopher Tangles is like a flying flatliner. Oh, wow. Very Lucha-like. Uh, but, of course, there's a distraction. Chris Jericho hits the Judas effect. Uh, Jake Hagar gets the pin. 
it was really good. Um, they begin to beat up Chris Voltaigne's more. Kaz jumps in. And then eventually, Scorpio Sky comes in and makes a save with the chair, clears the house. He saves SCU. So, again, another. <sighs> oh, yeah. You know who it looked like was in the wrestling crowd? Jazz. Indeed. But you know what? This actually was really good. I'll tell you what, SC Kazarian does not age. And I don't know how Christopher Tangle does what he does. It's another burrito of a match. Okay, then we have Rusev. Ru Rusev. Nada. We had Miro and Kip Sabian do a promo. Orange Cassie just there in the background with the best friends. They just, that's, that's terrible. I do know where they're filming that, though. So at least I know what's, I know where it's going on, at least. It makes it somewhat believable. Hey, and if, you're, if you are going to be a star of that character, yeah, you can actually, uh, I think they had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stand-up game. I think it was like two ninety nine at Walmart. Again, if you're a star, you have your own trailer, you could probably have a big video console. And it's, it's believable. I like that. Then Tony Schiavone comes out for a contract signing. And Kenny Omega and John Moxley. Um, the, the Cleaner Girls. I don't get it. Um, I know it was Kenny the Cleaner Omega, but it was like... <sighs> he was more of the mob cleaner upper. Not just a guy with a broom. Or who has ladies in like 80s outfits with brooms. I do like the 80s outfits though. And I'll always appreciate a woman of the 80s. So with that, um, he has a little curtain. God, Kenny Omega gets jumped by John Moxley. Finish the job. Um, we still know who beat up John Moxley. Yeah, he signs the contract. Very <laughs> very casually to Tony Schiavone. Um, then we move on. And then we have she, uh, Hikaru Shida taking on Anna J. Shida, still amazing. Um, Anna J is actually pretty good too. I can't really say anything bad about Anna J. Haven't seen a lot of her wrestle, wrestling, but this, from what I've seen, this is pretty good. Just a really kind of basic match. Uh, when they go to the outside, Shida gets sent into the bicycle rack. That's what it is. They are bicycle racks. Uh, then there was, there was like a Chichi Nando kick. That was great. A Chichi Nando kick on the outside. That was amazing to see. Uh, Shikaru Shida. Again, a great German suplex. With that, she had the Chinese wizard. Anna J. And for the second match, for the most part, she got beat up. Hikaru Shida wins. She retains her belt. Kind of predictable. You knew Anna Jay wasn't going to win. The whole Dark Order thing is, uh, It's not bad. For an AEW's women's match, it's actually not bad. It's still a taco of a match, though. Then we have Abaddon. Whoa, she's like creepy Sue Young. She comes out um, all bloody, messy. Yeah, uh, licks the belt. Not necessarily the most um, socially correct thing to do. But yeah, so we'll see Abaddon. She should be a good foil for Hikaru Shida. Then we, there's some notes about the diamond... Ring Battle Royal. So we'll see that, I think, this coming week. We'll see what happens. Then we get to the main event of the evening. So we have fe we have Muerta de la Triangular. Death Triangle, for those of you that don't, that don't know Mexican. See, si, Death Triangle. Death Triangle. Muerta de la Triangle. Or Triangular de Muerta. Taking on the Butcher and the Blade. This was actually really good. It starts as a brawl. Ray Phoenix and Pac, they just go right after the Butcher and the Blade. 
They're on the outside, can't do anything about it. Eventually, they get to the inside. Um, Butcher's definitely the muscle. He does look like that old-timey Belfast brawler, the guy that would just get into fistfights for money and, and win a lot of money. Again, he just beats Pac up, tosses him, uh, sends him out of the ring. Uh, Phoenix, how he does his, his rope jumping... It's truly amazing. Was it here? Yeah, I think it was here. So he goes, he, he literally walks up the top to the top rope, jumps to the second rope, and then does a backflip. Amazing. I would hurt myself in so many ways if I tried that stuff. Again, a true luchador. Uh, Butcher, he hits the, the running splash. Um, that was pretty good. Um, again, it was a gut wrench, double team move by Butcher and Blade. I forget what they call it. Fun stuff. Blade works over pack a little bit. Finally, it was a uh, submission. Or oh, a Phoenix was going for some kind of submission. I forget what kind of hold it was or pinfalls, like a crucifix. It's almost like he was going for the uh, Rings of Saturn. Uh, he tried to turn the crucifix again. Pack and blade. Dude, I don't want to get between those two. You have to, well, Pack versus Butcher is just a good old fashioned Newcastle upon time back alley fight. That's all that has to be said about that. Yeah, Pack and Blade's pretty close to it though. Uh, it's King <laughs> Eddie Kingston. Was on commentary the whole time. <laughs> He's, it's so good when they have the managers on commentary, mainly because they tell like the face manager, in this case, Tony Schiavone, to say, shut up, Tony. Don't make me slap the taste out of your mouth. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, little boy? So, yeah, that's, again, always good to see that. Again, it just makes, makes you chuckle a little bit. Then... Can that all of the the one like it's like oh wow uh, Pac works over the blade a little bit. Uh, uh, Pac has an amazing Northern Lights no, Northern Lights bridging suplex. Even Kingston says, "Damn, that's the way he hit a suplex like that." And ouch, the blade power slammed and like drove Pac right on his head. And it was just like ooh, because he didn't get all the way around. He kind of hit the mat. I think he tried to protect Pac as much as he could. But yeah, that's just like, ouch. And then there's a tiger bomb. Uh, Phoenix then comes in and makes a save. Uh, <laughs> that was a terrible, like, near total elimination. Again, if you're going to do classic wrestling moves like total elimination, you better do it freaking right, or I'm going to call you out on it. Uh, the bunny starts a distraction. Eddie Kingston comes out, distracts some more. For a change, the butcher and blade win. And I'll tell you what, they also deserve a win. So I like that. I like the fact that the heels are kind of winning, so they don't just seem hapless. Because nothing's terrible like a hapless heel, because this match is a delicious And now that we're back, let's talk a little bit about some SmackDown. Again, another show. Again, I cannot use the language that Senior Hobo Tom used. I'm pretty sure YouTube would not approve of that language. So SmackDown starts off. Uh, Jay Uso, Rome, um, he starts to sing the praise of Roman Reigns. Yes, he beat everyone. Roman Reigns like, really? You want to sing my praises? You just got whooped on. Prove yourself. They think you're a joke. They don't respect you. They don't respect you. They don't respect the family. Me. So yeah, um, Otis was supposed to have a match. I forget against who. Jay Uso just runs out, beats up Otis with the chair. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Otis is kind of a well. Otis is probably mad at Jay Uso at this point. Again, some of those were like legit chair shots too. So we start off the first match. It was glorious. Robert, uh, Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler taking on the Street Profits. Um, Ziggler 
and rude. <laughs> They're actually in rare form. They they actually do understand what it's like to be a tag team. I mean, I do understand uh, Bobby Roode was a part of Beer Money, very successful CNA tag team champion. Dolph Ziggler, eh, not so much a tag team champion, but he has held the heavyweight and I want, and correct me if I'm wrong, you two people out there, I want to say it was the U.S. No, IC belts, I think for a short stint. I know he held the big gold, I think it was a big gold belt. I forget, what was one, one of the major championship belts. So Dolph Ziggler definitely knows what it's like to be a champion. In the first part of the match, it's really very typical. The heel say control. Dolph hit, hit a famous sir. And starts to rake the eyes of one Montez Ford. That's right. I get the two of them confused. I'm surprised I haven't called called them them party prophets yet, but or or street party. I've done that a few times. I've caught myself doing that too. It's kind of scary. Um, from there, Dawkins and I want to see who has the better jumping hot tag. And I am getting so sick of that. You see it over and over from Montez Ford and Dolph Ziggler. They almost try to see who can outjump each other for the tag. No. Um, Dawkins gets in. Has a great bulldog on Robert Roode. Uh, hit that spine buster. And the splash. But the splash didn't connect. Um, Dolph Ziggler came in with a, a super kick. Montez Ford hit it in Seguri. Robert Roode to the sneaky roll-up. That was really good. Rude and Dolph Ziggler win. Who knows? Maybe one day down the road they'll get a... Ooh. Excuse me. They'll get a tag team champ shot. Um, It was an okay match. It was a taco of a match. Let's see here. Brian... Um, Daniel Bryan was interviewed. Uh, King Corman was interviewed. Hey, you're not me. It was more of The Undertaker. And... Oh, yeah, Sami Zayn preview. Uh, next match was Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn. Daniel Bryan is such a technical wrestler. It's so good to see uh, American Dragon Daniel Bryan. I'm like, oh, my God. Are they going to have one of their PWG matches? Is this going to be Bryan Danielson? Taking on El Generico in Chikara. Not really, but it was really close, though. Um, this was great. Uh, Zane, uh, he sized up a dive from the top rope. That was so good. Zane's definitely the smart wrestler. Daniel Bryan had a Frankensteiner. Uh, the setup with the yes kicks. They go, to the, they go to the apron, and they finally allowed Sami Zayn to hit a brain buster on the apron. Wow. That's when my jaw dropped. I'm like, wow, they're letting them wrestle for a change. They're not saying have this pre-programmed WWE match, but go out there, do what you do best. That's what everyone wants to see. That's what you want to see. That's what I want to see. That's that's what the, the hobo universe wants to see. And Daytona Beach, I don't, who, who cares about what Daytona Beach wants to see? That's a whole other issue. Uh, Sami Zayn then goes... For the outside, he wants to get the count out win. Smart way to win. Why win by three to work for it? You can get a little cheaper going into the outside. Again, smart wrestling. Um, he gets shoved in uh, to the ring. He gets blue. He gets two blue thunder bombs. Blue thunder bombs a signature, not a finisher. Never going to finish anyone. Um, Zane, it's like I had enough of this. Uh, he goes to the outside. Daniel Bryan throws him back in. <laughs> Sami Zayn just rolls out the opposite way. Goes right up to the ramp. Daniel Bryan chases him. Beats him up a little bit. However, at the kind of like eight. eight yeah, eight. Sami Zayn starts running back to the ring. He makes it in for the ten count. Daniel Bryan's counted out. Because the backstage, Jey Uso is just wailing on Daniel Bryan. That was so good. Until uh, Kevin Owens makes the save. We'll get into that. But I'll tell you what. This match between Daniel Bryan and, and Sami Zayn. <sighs> if it was longer. And it was more pro PWG style. Be higher. But 
overall, it's a burrito of a match. Then again, we see Kevin Owens save, saving um, Daniel Bryan. He confronts Jay Uso. Roman Reigns is like, you going to take that, Uso? We'll see what happens. Then it was, I don't know why they had this match. Natalia taking on Bianca Belair. Um, Bianca Belair was great. She's strong. Now he goes for a submission. Um, over the, oh, some over the, she gets sent over the top. I uh, got Lou Bridge, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Bailey shows up. She wants to do said interview. Um, when Bianca Belair went to punch Natalia, Natalia ducked. Bailey got nailed. Bailey did not necessarily like that. Um, Natty got pushed into Bailey. And I guess got, and I don't know. It was like some weird wonky DQ finish. But yeah. Um, I, um, Natalia won <sighs> by DQ. I don't know. How does, this is a chicharone. Of a match. Then we have Murphy taking on Hey, um, Baron Corbin. Um, this was a pretty, this was a decent match. It was a quick match, though. Uh, Corbin beats up Murphy in the beginning. Um, throughout the entire match, in order to give Murphy a little uh, leverage, Rey Mysterio would pop up in the ring, distract Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin would say, Hey, you, get off the ring. Hey, ref, tell him the mask to get off the ring apron. I'm having a wrestling match. And then, of course, um, he beat up Murphy a little bit some more. And then, on the other side, Dominic pops up in the ring. Of course, Baron Corbin's like, Hey, you, you can't be on a ring. This is my match. I'm Baron Corbin. King Baron Corbin. Um, eventually, Murphy gets the better of him. Murphy wins. Kind of quick match. Um, it was okay. It was a taco of a match. Uh, Paul Cruz and Big E interrupt to Sami Zayn interview. That's so good. Sami Zayn has so much criticism. So does Biggie. Apollo Crews is, is, is definitely learning stuff. Then, I, Charlie, I cut it! Billy Kay shows up. Oh, Billy Kay is amazing. She needs, to, she needs to have a more prominent role than she does. Billy Kay is amazing. Um, she's going to be on the mic with, with uh, Corey Graves and Michael Cole. That was funny. <sighs> Yeah, a 50-year-old Florida MILF Carmella shows up, um, does, does a promo. I don't know what she did to herself, but she looked like she aged, like, in, in advanced flea years or something. She went from looking hot, she looked from being, like, late 20-something hot to, like, 50-year-old blonde smoker Florida MILF, which is not the way you want to go, because the Florida sun will absolutely kill blonde women. And it makes them look 70 when they're only 45. That's a killer out there, folks. That's where I wear my mask, which is also SPF rated. Um, eventually, there's a, a little little bit of the bubble that shows up. Except for it's the boss thing, the boss. And it's like, okay, well, at least Sasha Banks gets her gets to have her comeuppance on, on, on this MILF. So, yeah, it was okay. It was what it was. Then the f main event of the evening. We have Kevin Owens taking on Jey Uso. This was good. Kevin Owens takes a fight straight to Jey Uso. Um, both in and out of the ring. Uso then does a reverse. A reverse. Uh, he reverses something. Uh, sends KO. Again into the corner. He posts KO. Jey Uso. He works over the arm so aggressively. Kevin Owens drapes over the rope. Yanks it. Stop! Ooh, hiccup. Stomps on it, beats it mercilessly to the point, and Kevin Owens is so good at selling the arm injury. You, you can see it 
literally like as he makes it hang limp next to his body. I mean, so much to the fact that he can't do a cutter. He can't hit the pop-up power bomb. He, he can't do a lot of stuff. And that was so good. Again, he stretches the arm. And like a like a uh, standing key lock, again really working the shoulder, the elbow, the whole arm, the tricep, bicep, almost like again a standing bicep cutter, vicious, vicious hold. Again, Kevin Owens so good at selling. Eventually, Kevin Owens finds a way to utilize, his, well, not so much, but he utilizes his his one weakness. It's a pump handle gut buster. Chase is like, okay, I'm done with having fun. Gets there, beats. Kevin Owens with a chair. Um, again, those some of those shots were vicious. Uh, Kevin Owens eventually does hit that stunner. Kevin Owens beats him up a little bit. Roman Reigns comes out. A little stare down between Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns. This will be something good. We got another burrito of a match. And that was both AEW and Raw. Um, Senior Hobo Tom. Again, and ugh, can't use those. I can't use half these words. I don't even want to know what a third of those words mean. But yep, Senior Hobo Tom will be back Monday. As is usual, usual time, I'll probably tell you about all his weekend stuff. Uh, other than that, thank everyone for watching. Please.